nobody mess with me anymore. And um, it just wasn't for me, and, and I, I eventually left, and I got my GED somewhere else. Right, and you ended up becoming a gypsy and traveling around. I was. I was a little gypsy. I was all over the place. I was in, um, I was in, oh, oh God, Athens, Georgia. Um, I met a guy there, and we became lovers for like three years and moved to Atlanta. I auditioned for the Starlight Cabaret, which is the big pride show they do in Atlanta every year. And have you ever heard of the Goddess Raven? Yes, as she became your drag she mother. Was, yeah, I went and auditioned for pride on my birthday, my 21st birthday. And um, she was the one that picks who got to be in the show or whatever. And I did Toxic by Britney Spears. and. Um, she said that I got in and, and she said, I want to talk to you. And she pulled me off to the side and she's like, look, I don't do this ever. But like, I want to help you. I want you to be my drag daughter. Wow. And like, I learned so much from her. Like really I did. She's old school drag and she was like, um, what they call a female impersonator. She did drag, but she was more like a female impersonator, like Dolly Levi. Like, right. you know, it's not so much like high glamor drag are over the top drag, it's like, this guy is dressed like a woman, she looks like a woman, she moves like a woman, and it's like what Trinity Taylor does. Trinity Taylor is a like a female impersonator. Right. But, um, yeah, so that's where I learned how to like make costumes and like get to events uh, almost 30 minutes late and paint in 10. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then you learned oh, very bitch. valuable skills. She, I'm like, I don't know how in the hell that she did it, but like she would have to be on stage at like 11 o'clock and we're driving from Atlanta to Birmingham. She's got an electric razor, like raising her face. Um, and we get there and I'm like, they're starting the show. She was the last one in the show. And she gets in there and she just puts that makeup on and puts the last bobby pin in that ponytail and lights the fire torches and goes on stage and I'm like, how the fuck does somebody do that? Like in 30 minutes. Right, <laughs> good yeah. skills to learn. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a blessing and a curse, but um, I'm just glad that I can do it. Yeah, now when she would take her makeup off at night, you would find yourself not wanting to take your makeup off. Well, for me, it was the first time where I felt like I could be feminine and be celebrated for it instead of being picked on for it. Um, and then it was just a little bit deeper because whenever I would get off stage and, and not think about numbers and stuff like that, I just thought about like how I like to go check the mailbox or like how when I walk in a room, how I want to introduce myself. Like, cause I feel, the, I feel like who I am as a person, me, looking more like a woman compliments that and I feel like I relate more to female and anything you know but I'm I'm a tomboy at the same time you know like it's crazy I like to climb trees and I like to go to the gym and I'm not like like I can be ultra feminine but like that's not real that's not who I am necessarily mm -hmm. you know I feel like I'm I feel like I'm a little bit of everything you know but I when I walk in a room, this is I. I want to introduce myself as a female because right. that's how I feel. Yeah, and that's the most yeah. important thing. It's hard for trans people in the South. It really yeah. is, and I mean, if there's anybody from one of those little small towns, like that's where I'm from, and here I am in Hollywood on Hay Queen. You know what I'm <laughs> yes, saying? An like it can story. happen. Like you just have you just have to like not stop dreaming and every step closer to it is one step closer to it yeah well said honey yeah i think that deserves a round of applause don't y'all yeah. yes <laughs> now look everybody we are in a very important time in our country where the leader is out of his motherfucking mind the person in the white house is not for us as lgbtqia people he's destroying the environment He's spying for Russia. He's doing all sorts of fucked up shit. And the only way that we can stop this by activating ourselves and getting out of the house, not just retweeting on Facebook or retweeting on Twitter or any of that kind of stuff, we need to get out and vote. We got 95 days 
right now until the next election. And that is what is going to say whether we're going to let these evil ass people still stay in charge or whether we're going to revolutionize this shit and get them the fuck out of there. You were talking about this earlier. This is yeah, a really important time, don't you think? Get up and get out. You have to get in your neighborhood and like go go shake someone, go shake a stranger's hand and get to know somebody and, and so that we can share our, our views and maybe enlighten people like, hey, there are other people in this world that, that matter too, you know? I mean, and, if, you, um, if you have the right politics, you can't yeah. just be talking about it on social media. You have to yeah. act. You, you have, have to get vote. out in your community. Don't let these evil motherfuckers stay in charge of us, okay? All right. Let's talk a little bit about your time on Drag Race. Okay. It was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, it was. Um, t- we filmed in 2009. Right. It aired in 2010. You were asked to be on the first season, right? You were an alternate. Um, yeah. Duran casting would go around to like all the big cities, I guess, and like um, scout uh, different drag performers or whatever. And they stopped in Atlanta and they seen me and oh. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> what is that eyebrow doing way up there? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'm so glad I did that then. So they were interested in me, and everyone else was like, oh, it's this little show RuPaul's trying to do. You know, like a lot of people talk down about it, and I was like, y'all suck here in Atlanta. I'm getting out of here. So I took them up on their offer, and I'd send in all the little stuff that I have to send in, and um, I was thinking about what my drag mother said uh, to me uh, about uh, marketing yourself because back then you didn't have MySpace and all that and so and Facebook or whatever social media. So what she would do is she would find out what the clubs were in like different cities and she would um, send them a box with one of her old shoes in it or like a shoe a heel in it with a scroll and it says I just want to get my heel in the door and like send like a videotape of like a collage of her performances and so they would book her and so basically what I did is I took a shoe box I put one of my shoes in it rolled up all the paper that I had to sprayed it with my perfume and wrote a little note says I just want to get my heel in the door and with a kiss print on it so I sent them a shoe box so when they open it up um, it left an impression it wasn't just like another DVD or whatever, and they said that um, that they remembered me for that. And one of the girls that was in casting said she went to college in Athens, and she'd seen me perform there too. So like it was, it was like meant for me to be on that show. And you said it changed your life. It did change my life, um, mostly for good. Um, I kind of uh, get. I don't know, I kind of feel weird when people say, oh, I loved you on your season. And because when I watch that, I don't see me. Mm. I, because that person that was, I felt like I was pretending to be something that I wasn't on the show because like I knew that I identified as being trans and stuff like that. And, um, and I felt like I couldn't, um, I mean, I wasn't in a place where I could like live as a woman then, mm-hmm. you know, but like I identified as that. And I did talk about it a lot. Um, and that was what I was really focused on at the time of my life right. was starting it. And, and that's um, what caused you to walk off of the reunion actually, right? Um, yeah, because I was nervous about talking about it. And, but I had, whenever they would call before the reunion, they kind of call you to like find out what's going on in your life. So they know what to talk to you about. And, and I was like, I had just started a rock band. I was like a lead singer in a rock band. And, and I was transitioning. And so I feel like maybe they didn't have anything else to like talk about mm-hmm. with me was the fact that I was transitioning. And I had talked about it so much during my interviews on the show that didn't get aired. Right. And, and um, that I was glad that they did let me do it, but I was kind of nervous. Um, because I was like, fuck, like, everybody's gonna see this. Like, I'm not, like, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do, but, like, I knew that I lived my life, you know, basically as a boy and stuff like that. And I, and I was still trying to get comfortable with, like, changing my body. I was so scared about doing that, even though, like, I know that it was what would make me feel more comfortable. Um, 
it was just really scary because I knew that if I said it out loud, then I'm not going to let myself down. Right. So it was like it was like a good thing that I said it, and that's why I was crying. I was crying because I was like, "Fuck! Like this is real. Like this is really happening right now." And like, um, I just why am I crying right now? I just really needed that because I had tried to avoid it for so long. I knew like when I was like a little kid in in Georgia when I didn't even know what that was, you know? And so, like, that's why I get emotional about it, because it was like, I figured out what was wrong with me, and I know what I have to do to change it. And I didn't have anybody on TV to look up to, you know? Yeah. And so I felt like, maybe this will be a chance for me to, like, be somebody that someone can be inspired by. Even though I didn't, I didn't really know a lot about trans to, like, really like, go in-depth on it, on the show. But I think, like, sometimes just a few words may be enough for people to be like, okay, I get it. And you said that people seeing you say that on the show, you've gotten so much mail that it, it was something that yeah. really changed people's lives. It, it was um, really nice to see that because especially I didn't feel like how um, things... I, I wasn't the most entertaining as far as like I don't I don't know maybe I wasn't the storyline that they wanted to tell for the show uh-huh. you know they're trying to teach people about drag and here's this person that's talking about trans and the show was just too too early yeah. for that you know we're trying to figure out what this drag thing is right now yeah and um so Wait, what was the question again? <laughs> we were just talking about your experience. Oh, and my how, experience. And how that, how that, the reaction you got from that. Oh, yeah. Um, I got a lot of uh, messages. I still get messages to this day from people saying that they watched my season. And, and I'm like, how can what I said help anybody? Because I look at it and I'm like, I know so much more now than I ever did then. Um, just because there were limited resources, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's great. I, I'm glad that somebody's seen something in that or heard something in that that like really like clicked with them. Or like um, some people say that my they say their parents or friends never even knew anything, knew anyone that was like trans until they seen that. Yeah, you know. And I try to like dumb down who I am as a trans person because I just want to live my life my life normally but like I'm I'm just just I was brought up by tough strong trans women fuck it if you don't accept me for this sorry because I've been doing all this shit for you for decades years try to play this part you know make myself miserable for your comfortability fuck you it's time for me to be comfortable and you to learn a lesson. Well said, Sonique, well said. I think on that militant note, (laughs) we will get to present you with this trophy because you've turned it, sweetie! Yay! (laughs) Yes, sweetie, you've done it. And I hope you are ready for a little enjoyment because we've also gotten you a lap dance! Yay! She wanted to throw oh, shit. Come in on, there. Shay. All Shay right. <laughs> yes, thank you to Lady Red. Thank you to our audience. And mostly, thank you to the beautiful and brave Sony. I will see you next time on Hey Queen. Bye, baby. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our Hey Queen podcast up here. Check out more of our incredible interviews down here. And, of course, don't forget to what? Subscribe! Subscribe!